Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting with radicals. So, a couple rules we want to lay out to start with. Some words you want to be familiar with. This number um, or letter on the outside of the radical, that's called the coefficient. Okay. Whatever is in this little check, as I call it, it's called the root or the index. Okay. So, you'll notice right now it's blank. That means there's an understood two there, but sometimes you'll see a three, a four, and anything else, anything above. So that's called the index or root. The radical and whatever under is underneath it, that's called the radicand, okay? Those are some terms I'm gonna be throwing out throughout the video that you wanna be familiar with. So in order to add or subtract with radicals, they must have the same index and the same radicand in order to be like terms. So we're used to saying, okay, if you have an x squared, in order to have a like term, you'd have to have another x squared, okay? Radicals work the same way. It has to be the same index and the same number or number letter combination underneath the radical. Okay, lastly, you always want to simplify if possible. So if you can, if you get an answer with a radical in it, you want to make sure you break it down and simplify the radical as much as possible. So if you need to review simplifying radicals, that's something you need to da have down first. And I have a video on that as well before you start trying to add and subtract with radicals. Looking at our first problem, we've got three times the square root of six minus two times the square root of six. So notice we do have like terms here. They both are blank in the check, which means they have understood twos there, they're square roots. Um, and they both have the same number underneath the radical, so the radicand is six. So we can go ahead and combine the coefficients. Um, so three minus two is one, Right, and then what's cool about this, the like term stays the same. Just like when we're adding or subtracting using X or another letter, we just add or subtract the coefficients, the radicand stays the same. Now, we don't need to see the one out there, it's, it's really understood. Um, so if I was gonna write my final answer, I would just write square root of six. That is our final answer for that one. Okay, of course I would wanna ask myself, can six be broken down any further? And it cannot, that's the most simplified that radical can get. I could try to do a factor tree over here, would not be able to break it down and pull any pairs out. Let's see over here. I've got negative square root of, so that's an understood negative one on the outside. Negative one times the square root of 17x plus five times the square root of 17x plus two times the square root of seven. So I immediately notice I've got a like term here and a like term there. So let's go ahead and add the coefficients on the outside. So this is negative one plus five, which is positive four. And then remember our like term, so in this case, square root of 17 X stays the same. And then this plus two square root of seven, I can't combine it in that because they are not like terms, right? 17x is totally different from seven. So I would wanna make sure 17 is in the most simplified form, and it is. Um, I cannot break that down anymore, so this is my final answer. All right, let's look at this example. So square root of 45 plus two times the square root of five minus 20 plus cubed root of five. Um, so you probably are looking at that and thinking, well, I don't have any like terms, right? Here, for the first two, we were able to very clearly identify the like terms right at the front. Looks like I don't have any. Um, so in this case, I would wanna make sure, is everything broken down all the way? Let's start with 45. So can I simplify 45 anymore? And we absolutely can. So I would wanna break down 45 using the factor tree method. Two numbers that go into our multiples of 45, I immediately think five and nine, right? Five, I can't break down anymore. Nine, I could break down to three and three. We're looking for a pair of two. There's an understood two in there, so I'd wanna pull out the three and pull out 
and then I can't pull out the five, so the five gets boxed, he stays underneath the radical. So that's one three that gets to come out with the five underneath. Now, if you're confused by what I just did there, definitely go back and review the simplifying radicals video, okay? Because I walked through that in great detail, okay? Let's move on. Two square root of five. Um, I can't break down five anymore. That's as low as it's going to go. And hopefully you're noticing, ee, we got some like terms now, but let's keep going. Let's make sure there's nothing else we can break down. Negative one times the square root of 20. Well, let's try to break 20 down. All right, I know two and 10, and 10 breaks down to two and five. Got a pair of twos there. The five gets boxed. He's going to stay underneath. So at this point, I've got a negative one out here. So remember, that's negative one times whatever I'm bringing out, in this case, a two. So that's a negative two square root of five. You gotta be careful when you got a negative out there. All right, and then cubed root of five, I can't break that down anymore. You could try to do a, a factor tree, but you'll realize that five and one are the only things that go into five. That's as far as it goes. So I'll just bring that down, cubed root of five. So now I've, def I've got some like terms here now that I can combine. Notice how when we started at the beginning we had nothing. Now I've got some stuff that I can work with. So let's combine all the like terms. So this one, this one, and this one are all like terms. Now notice I did not underline cubed root of five. Now you may be thinking, well it's a five. It's the same radicand and it is but it's not the same index. Remember, it's gotta have the same index and radicand. So these indexes are two, understood two. That one's a three, so not a like term. All right, so let's do three plus two minus two. So three plus two is five, and then five minus two is three. And then the radicand and index stay the same, and then we'll bring down this plus cubed root of five, there's nothing I can do with that. So this is my final answer broken down fully. Let's do this last example. So I've got 10 times the square root of 10. Um, let's try to break 10 down. What's interesting is if you try to do it, the only thing you can pull out is two and five. I can't break either of those down anymore. I don't have any pairs, which means 10 is as low as it goes. Nothing I can do here. Let's try the 25. Now you may be thinking 25 is a perfect square, and it is. If you didn't catch on to that, that's okay. You could still do a factor tree and it'll tell you the same thing. 25, I know five and five goes into it. And I need a pair of twos to break out. And in this case, I've got one set of fives. So that one five is gonna come out to join the negative two, so it becomes negative two times five square root of 25. Oh, excuse me, ooh, sorry. Let's scratch that out, my bad. <laughs> we got rid of the square root of 25 by breaking that down, so it's just negative two times five, apologize. Um, so let's go ahead and simplify that. Um, at this point, I've got 10 square root of 10, negative two times five is negative 10. And I would ask myself, do I have like terms here? And I don't. Um, now some students would ask, well, can I go ahead and take this 10 out here and then subtract that 10 and then they'll cancel out. We can't do that. And that's because this 10 is tied to this square root of 10 through multiplication. So I can't just undo that, right? It's these two are tied together. I can't combine those, those are not like terms. So this is just, as low as it goes. You guys try this one. So square root of 12 plus three times the square root of three. Post the answer in the video description below the video. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.